Welcome. We're going to do a pinch pot uh, candy dish and a pinch pot bird in this creative building class. This is a piece that's wedged. We're going to start with our basic pinch pot first. Just thumb in. Just keep building out. If you want, you can get like one of the ro rollers here to spin things around, make your life easier, bring it up closer to you. But because I got this on a board, it would be easier for me to spin it down here where both of us can see it. Once again, put it on a board and a piece of paper. One, you don't have to potentially damage it when you're picking it up at the final end there. And also it gives it some nice support to dry on. I think we want a rounded base bowl this time. You do want to get that good solid flat base in. You're also going to want to put your names in the, or your initials and a stamp in here for Athabasca Pottery. Pick a smaller stamp. Athabasca Pottery. Put the initials. They're probably going to wear out by the time we get to the cleaning stage, but we can put them right back in. Okay. I think I want a little bit of a rounder bowl this time. So, it's the candy dish. We don't need anything big or spectacular. If you want to pick up, pick it up while you're working on it to start with, go right ahead. Make sure your base isn't too much thicker than your walls, and, it, and the bottom down here doesn't get super thick because that can cause some problems. There's really not many rules when it comes to a freeform project like this. Whatever you need in order to get the shape you're after is generally fair game. I do want to try and keep that little bit of a narrower opening to give it that little bit of an elegant look at the end. Also to keep our hands out of the candy bowl, if possible. And then ready to get your nice, see how it's uneven there? That's one way to get it flat. You just have to re-trim things. Another way of getting your top even is to pin on this. Make sure you pin your paper, because otherwise it will move. If, as long as you get your hand anchored very carefully, you can spin it on the spinner and take bits off. Again. If you do spin and push together, it actually will shrink in the opening. Clay is nice and cooperative like that, as long as it's still soft. Once it starts to dry, it's not going to be nearly so forgiving. Big ones like this, use a little bit of water. Just sachet over it. Smooth all of our wrinkles. Another way of doing this is to use a sponge. See what I'm pushing is starting to collapse. It's a little bit too soft for me to be hanging on it from its side while trying to smooth it. This is the case where your spinning wheel will be better, or you spin around by hand with the paper here. Okay, rougher one here. Okay. 
Okay. I'm just getting smoother. Some of them will come out more in the cleaning session. But in this session, we're going to do as much as we can. You can see the inside's a little bit rough in some spots, so certain tools. This isn't the right tool for this, but I don't have it at hand. Any of these bubbles like this, you can just kind of rub it with your fingers, get rid of any of the bigger, big grooves, smooth things out. You can also put patterns into your clays at the same time by doing similar things. If you really want certain patterns, it does work like that. See, I do have these uneven edges. I'm just going to brace them, trim them. You can kind of edge them down a little bit lower in the cleaning stage as well. So you don't need to get too, too particular here. But those were a couple of rather large gobs. If you're trying to smooth things in your thumb sticks, just get it in the water, then it will slide far easier over the piece to cover up any little bits. You will find that when it comes to small imperfections, this is why many small bowls are textured unless you're wheeling. to use this at this point. I'm going to try and adjust the camera here so you guys can see. There we go. So you can do all sorts of different things, but I found this little wheeler guy. So I can just Making sure it bites in quite well so it leaves a good groove that I don't have to try and go over again. Notice it did deform it a bit. It's because the insides are kind of soft. Just go back inside, pop them back out. So there's that. And I'm going to do a lighter one around the top. Just because I want the dappling. I'm going to go around it several times. It's easier if your thing is in the center. Mine's not. It is kind of deforming our piece a little bit. There we go. That's a very basic pinch pot candy dish. I probably am going to end up touching this up in the drying phase. I'll have to see how it turns out. Sometimes glaze will actually do more than the decoration, so a little bit of unevenness actually looks pretty good. Um, possible little candy dish. Um, we could once more did more with it, covered it with little tiny cutouts, done more decorations. 
done it in like a complete bark pattern. But it's a basic little pinch pot. Okay. And we're going to put him to the side. I'm going to need that board. And I forgot to bring a second one. A second section, second thing I want to mention that you could do paddling to flatten it. We did ours curved. If you want flat, use like a wooden paddle and you pat the sides as you go, and that will flatten your piece out. Oops, sorry. There's your little goal. Bye. Okay. Second piece of clay. This one's going to be called Pinch Pot Bird. This one's a little bit different. Instead of pinching them into pots, we're actually going to pinch them into like a, almost like a thin vase almost. Let me readjust the camera here, sorry. It's about right. You want all the edges on this pretty much hold the exact same width to get this going. So basically, it's this little ugly mushroom hat guy. And what we're going to do, we're gonna kind of plunk him down, give him a nice base. And we are going to actually kind of pinch him shut. If you can see that. Careful not to collapse him. He is going to want to collapse. Don't let him collapse. I'm out of water here. Give me one second. Okay, you're gonna want lots of water for this. It's gonna be your slipping agent. He's gonna help. And you sh we should have really put a little bit of slip in here. Here's our slip. Okay, bring it a little bit closer. Okay, pinch them together. Your biggest bow is going to be keeping this guy from collapsing as you're trying to clean him. You may end up taking a long rod, like a little knitting needle. Try and leave one of the ends open for a little while while you try and support him from the inside as you carefully mesh him shut. Okay. Usually you take your smaller end and you pinch it just a little bit. Kind of like a choke hold. You want them narrow enough that it's like a base of a tail, but remember this is clay. You are going to want support underneath it. You can also wedge, alter the shape of your bird's body at this point too. Lifting things once more, the needle to the inside. Can you have any big bumps like this? Well, it's definitely a tail of some sort. Here's our basic body and tail. Your head's going to be a little more interesting. We are going to... Take your hand, you're going to squeeze him up to give him his neck without pushing down too far here so it doesn't create a humpback effect. And we're slowly going to continue squeezing up. And we're going to turn over. And yeah, he's going to look some funny in a little bit of spots. This is where things come in to...
water. Okay, and depending how high you want his head, it can be in any direction. Often you will have too much in the beak. Just pinch it off, put it to the side. We're probably going to use it later. If your fingers start sticking, get them wet. You don't want them sticking too much right about here. And you'll probably end up using tools and stuff just to smooth things out and get things going. Don't be surprised if you use little bits of clay to fill in holes at this stage. Fill in some of the bigger dips. See it's sticking. Use a little bit of water so it doesn't stick, but I can still smear it. So that gets rid of that big dip we had in the neck there. And as you can see, we still have some other issues with this poor neck. So I need to work about straightening my poor bird up. He would turn his head anyhow. I think we're going to make them into a duck, just because so I can never manage those little chicken beaks. You're going to shape the head. If you need to bring up pictures of ducks or other things just to see exactly how their heads are shaped, definitely go for it. Or if you're like me, you can just wing it and hope for the best. Basically anything, even the ends of your tools can actually work very well for smoothing in this stage. Just make sure you don't break through your seam here while making sure you do keep that quite well sealed. His forehead's quite big enough. So you can always add more on to add extra pieces where you need them, shave them off. A fair bit of the shape we'll be doing today. But a bunch of the cleanup will be left until it's leather hard and can take a little bit more pressure. Oh. There's our basic duck. I can see a dip there. You'll usually get a small dip on the chest just because of the way we pull it up. So I'm get a little bit wet. It is pretty tacky and I probably don't need the water or the slip, but I'm gonna use it anyhow. Just don't press too hard because once again, it's hollow on the inside and it will give when you push. So you're being quite gentle here. Unfortunately, it's sticking to my fingers more than anything else right now, so let's get them wet. There's times like this when tools will actually probably be your best bet to 
to smooth out the edges. I'm just using the back end of this carving tool here just to spread it out so you can't see the seams as well. And after that, my finger can come in and help spread. Get rid of the wrinkles. kind of hoping to get out. Just spraying out the edges so you can't see them as easily. Also seals it on a bit better. Okay, you can hold things back, look at them, see if things are a little lopsided. I should probably stamp the bottom of this. Once again, it's hollow, so I really have to be careful. It's not a good stamp. I'll have to end up carving it. It didn't stay. I'll recarve the Athabasca pottery later on when it's a little bit harder and can take the pressure. still sits. So there's the ducky. Now if you really want you could add little tiny wing tips here by taking a piece of clay and pinching it out for wings and just carving little tiny deeper grooves in. I'm gonna go with the simpler look this time. Like if you wanted wing tips just pinch out a triangle and then you add it on you just carefully carve with your carver here and create grooves to show where the rest of the wing is. So I'm just gonna go for the simpler look here. I'm going to add lines on the tail. On second thought, I think the, the really simple look of this guy might be the best, so we're going to erase these. Use a little bit of slip as our medium this time. If I wanted detail, I'd probably put more detail on, but in this case, I think this piece will look better with just a simple look with the glaze itself bringing the piece to life. Just using the back of my nail to smooth out the grooves I left. that. I'm going to grab a big round tip guy. Give them big eyes. Make sure they're even. It's nothing worse than a lop-eyed lop duck. And I'm going to find... A little kind of flat edge guy, push it against the bill to make the nose. Make little nostrils, and there's our basic duck. Maybe I have enough clay here. Maybe I will try the wings. Just to give you an idea. Huh. I had some leftover clay from my last project. Okay, so. Flatten it. 
to a triangle. It is gonna be thicker at the tip. This is the part that's gonna stick out. And we're gonna gradiate back in. So that's where the wing will disappear into the body where we can start the carving. Just make sure it fits and doesn't look too, too out of place. As you can see, this one is a little too wide. We need a narrower wing for this poor duck. Do it to fit the size. This one was a little bit too thick and a little bit too long. So we're just gonna fix that. You'll often have a slight bow to the wing where it's gonna go up and over. It's like a wing on a folded bird. So there's that. So, and we are going to score this. I'm gonna use lots of slip against the body because we don't want this coming off. Actually, he's not quite thin enough. I need him quite thin to where he joins to the body. Otherwise, it's not going to work so well. Okay. Let's slide him back a bit. Their feathers usually do come over their rump. Just making sure this binds quite well and hopefully a little seamlessly once we even it out. Just so it's not too, too. There we go. So there's our wing tip. Where it is 3D. Kind of comes in. And as it becomes a seamless hole with the main part of the body, that is where you can take over and... Off my fingers here. Use a carving tool and suggest where the wings actually belong. Okay, there's that for the basics. Usually, your front of the wing will also stand out a little bit more. Just get a little piece of clay. We're going to make a little half circle here. Once again, thicker on the outer edge, taper into the inside. We're going to blend it into the body. Okay, see how it kind of lays there. Once again, these are times when your tools are actually your better friend. You can either use a slip, you can even use slip for stuff like this, because there's a lower chance of it cracking than when using water. Just take your time, work it over, work your patches in. If you want, you can add a little ridge of clay here and there on the top, or as you can see, because it's already there. My walls were thick enough to support me carving just a little bit further back, which gives the appearance of a ridge without actually having to add one. Oh, let's use this time to... Don't make your tips too, too thin because they will be your weak point and they will be what cracks usually first besides your tail. Okay. 
So there's your appearance of the top of the wing ridge, even though we actually didn't add one. We're just going to continue those efforts around here. Even though we added the ridge to the front, I'm still going to go in. Watch your thumb in the back here so we don't flatten things we aren't supposed to. I'm going to go ahead and still carve a little bit more out. Just to give the front of that wing that extra pop. Some of this one can be done in the cleaning stage because we are just carving out a bit. But while the clay is so pliable, this is a good time to do your wing shapes along with any revisions that you might have to pair out. I use my fingernail in like this. It gives me that nice little groove. You can see down in there. I can just take my finger, push this up, and that gives me another nice big ridge. And I can just re-smooth all this out. This duck has rather thin wings apparently, but it's a little bit of a divot there. I'm just trying to smooth out. And there will be little shallow spots you'll have to just to kind of patch in, add clay to smooth out, carve up. Oops. And if you go too fast, you'll occasionally make mistakes. You just smooth them up, pretend they were intentional. <laughs> Your little edges in here, I'm trying to smooth them up, but in reality, they're minor details. I'm probably going to end up waiting until the next class to clean in there because the basic form is there. We just need the tinier stuff. So that's one wing on a duck. Now, your bigger challenge is to make the matching wing roughly the same size. Turn up some of the plastic, it's getting a little bit hard on me. Again, I don't want that. I'm actually going to mix a little bit of slip in with this. Okay. Alrighty, so just basics. Clean off my fingers there. Once again, start with the wing tip. And we're going to gradiate out and thinner at the same time. Once again, you're usually going to have some tapering to the wing. Make it so that your good side is going to be the one with the drop is in where the wing is. Match it up to this one. See how they compare. Remember that you will be planted a little bit more. Okay, try and line it up, looks about right. Okay. I'm carefully going to match it up on both sides here. So I want it to be roughly the same. I'm going to thin it out to match the other one. If I wanted, I could put flag against the body. It would make it a lot more stable. But because I can never do anything easily, we're going to do this. Okay, it's matching, about the same shape. Check, check. So now, just as we did on the other side. There's your basic wing tip. 
Now for your harder task is to try and match your same wing grooves. I've never managed it yet, so if you do, congratulations. I am trying to match it up with the other side as I go. Okay. I'll probably keep pinching those poor guys all night long. This one, the bottom half, will need some help, but for the meantime, it's there. These are a little too dry for me. Once again, get our half C shape. It's not quite right there. I am just loosely hanging it. I'm not squeezing it. Remember, it is still filled with air here. Okay, make it so it matches. Get some scoring done. You may end up with more shallow spots. That one's kind of dry, so I'm just going to dip it in water before working it in. Doing this around the edges, one, helps it adhere, but two, it also helps spread in a much more even fashion. Just because there's as big of a divot here, I probably will end up adding actually a ridge where I didn't need to on this one, just because of how things worked out. Just the clay from when we made it. It didn't have quite as much um, height there. So, a little snake. Size it up. Just gonna do one simple little score line. too much so I will trim it back and I will reapply it elsewhere get a little bit of slip so things slide a bit better you can't see it but this spot here is actually quite dark I can feel it giving beneath my fingers every time I press it which is why I'm having to be a little more gingerly doing my work here Taking where it's not needed, reapplying it where it is, and eventually you will actually have a wing. So there is your wing, the top edge of it at least. Once again, I am going to go over with this just to give it that nice defined groove. Which, to be honest, I'm barely using the edge of my nail. Lots of this will smooth out in the second cleaning, but I'm just doing this here. You can see where dirty fingers are leaving all sorts of funky marks. 
And for the front of the wing, while holding it previously, I managed to squish a good chunk of it. Once again, carve down around the front. Carving quite a bit off here. You probably don't want to take quite as much off as I just did. Just dragging a little bit of the clay down here, make the wing a little bit wider. Won't get much, but that is your two basic wings. It does need more cleaning. We will have to smooth out little bits and stuff still there to go. But as the basics run, there's our duck. I'm not going to put any lines in the wings, though that's an option. So I think a little bit's gonna be a little bit plainer here as a an easier one to glaze. Okay, let's get this off. It still sits flat. Yep. So there's our duck. One thing to remember with everything hollow, because we have air inside, when we go to fire it, it gets very hot and it expands. So it's going to need a place to escape. So you're gonna take your sharp, and it can be anywhere. It can be in the chest. His head's solid, so I can't put it nose, nostril. So in this case, we are going to give him an air hole where the sun doesn't shine. You'll have to keep that clear both for glazing and for firing, just so nothing hot inside can make this poor bird explode. So that's not what you want your bird to do. So there he is, and he's starting to get to that tacky stage where we're better off just putting him down and laying him dry and cleaning him in a week. So that's your basic duck and i'll join you later when it's time to clean the poor thing okay and we're cleaning our pinch pot candy dish and our bird or duck today we've been drying about a week they're still a little bit tacky but they're cleanable okay we're gonna start with this guy there's really not much we can do with him he's pretty much well done um just smooth out your bottom any little bits where you find like wrinkles as you can see that get to smooth those out at this stage as small as they are, a damp sponge is all you need. Just be careful in going over it, because if you go over your design, you'll actually round the edges, you can possibly rub your design out. So be careful in doing that. If they don't want to disappear, use the back of your nail to smooth them down, or a tool, whichever you prefer. Move him right before I hit him. As you can see, some of the pattern kind of dug out there. If you want, you can take a tool and just go through this very gently, but it does leave a noticeable difference. So be very careful when you do this. Any pieces on the bone that might have stuck, go ahead, clean them off. So these rough bits here we can rub away next time we clean them before we get fired. I'm 
This is where our design actually connected last time. So I'm just going to smooth it over, make it look a tad bit more natural, a little bit more of a flow to it. Any of these lines that you don't want, you can just smooth them over at this stage. They can disappear. Let's move back my nail. So the biggest thing with this pattern I put here is that it's got lots of little rough edges in it that will actually be quite sharp once it's fired. So you can get a damp sponge and gently rub it over them to smooth out any rough edges that the sponge encounters. Get this other inner edge as well. Rub your fingers over it. You can feel if there's any sharp or rough edges. Clean them up, catch them up. Cleaning the inside is gonna be a little bit harder um, this one actually doesn't need much. Some people will use a sponge or one of the wooden balls on a stick. I'm going to use a little bit of this here. I'm actually using my finger in here to smooth things out. It actually is quite smooth. It's just a few inconsistencies I wouldn't mind reducing a bit. If you've got long fingernails, this isn't going to be as fun as you like. You can use other tools as well. Okay. Smooth now. Not bad. I think that's good enough there. If you want to do any carvings or decorations, now's the time. Yeah, Mr. Duck. He was pretty wet last time, so he's actually pretty rough at the moment. You can see all the tackiness on him. He's still fairly damp, a little damp than what I like to clean the mats, but it's manageable. Okay, let's clean up this spot first. There we go. So his tail's a bunch of rough lines I can see that I don't quite like, so we're just going to take a tool and scrape some of them off. That's flatter. Okay, so the edge of his tail is also kind of off there a little bit. If I want, I could put little um, dimples in it, just so you could see exactly where it was. But I don't think I want to in this case. So I'm going to carve the edges a little bit more.
there's a sponge just barely damp to smooth it out. And rub everything down. Any lines, you can rub them out now. So you can see it's still quite moldable, it's still a fairly wet stage. So my fingers are actually pushing the clay around a little bit. Okay, you can kind of see there's still a few pieces. So as you can see, the bottom has a bunch of stuff still clumped on it. I'm just going to clean it off a little bit. Still a few dips I really want. I could fix them up here or add more clay, but in this case, we're just going to carve it so it's not quite as noticeable of a dip. Remember, he is still hollow, so don't put too, too much pressure on. So there, our previous dip is a little less noticeable. If I really want, I could even out both sides, but I don't think they're really going to notice. Okay. So any additional carving you want to do, now is a good time to do it. Um, there really isn't much for me to do with this guy because after a fairly simple design. If you're unsupported pieces like your wingtips and your tails, watch when you're cleaning them so you don't break them. Because it is fairly still um, delicate. I gotta set this guy down because his head is a little too delicate for me to um, hold him and try and clean him. So many touch ups.
Using water and a tool allows for a smoother look once you complete it, which is why I did, dipped it more before doing this. You will notice as you clean little tiny dibbles and bits well, as you can see it. Just little bits of loose clay we'll try and stick on. Those will just dry and dust off when they go to get fired. One thing to watch if you are resting them on the table like this is wherever you rest them, it will actually rough up your piece. So do keep that in mind. You can always put them on a piece of a sponge if you want to kind of reduce it a bit. But you'll probably end up cleaning wherever spot he rested on the table. the um, arm of my steel piece here to kind of force smooth it because I can't bring enough force in that little tiny corner to bear. See, my nails are a little long. I just nail gouged it. Just wipes right up. When I'm rubbing it here, I am supporting it with the back with my finger, just so I don't break his bill off. Once again, the rounded one gives him a little bit of a softer look. Oh, when you put your sponge down the table, also make sure you don't put it on wet or on other pieces of clay, because they will stick. And you have all sorts of things on your sponge when you come back to use it. A little of a dimple where his head's made in his body. Now's a good time to clean it. I'm just taking this, rubbing it down, just carrying the clay over, and just smoothing out any bits. I haven't done this one yet, so we'll come back to him. Okay, so I don't know if you can see it, there's this little tiny dark black bump right here. Cause, just because of the color, I know it's a rock, it's a little tiny one, but I'm going to pick it out here. Otherwise, it will blow in the kiln, which isn't an insurmountable thing being that close to the surface, but... Game behind the wing tips is a little bit harder. You may end up using a tool, a toothbrush, just something to get in there. 
where you and the sponge might not be able to. Just use your tool to smooth it. Use a little bit of water if it wants to stick. My fingers are pretty wet here, so it's counting. any little pieces that need to be carved out or something like that go right ahead okay so where your wings joined they may have been a little bit um tacky before you can use your tools now to smooth things out without hurting anything In this case, I'm making the groove a little bit deeper. It's really noticeable on this side here, so you can see it. You hold it up, look at it from all angles, look for something that you might not like. Maybe one little piece of clay is out too far and you want to trim it back a bit to smooth things out. Maybe you want to add a little more decoration somewhere. A little hole right here I'm just trying to fill in. I think he's about done. Uh, the words in the bottom did come a little bit out with all of our plane, so I can use a little tool and re scratch them in. They're pretty tiny.
my camera viewer is backwards, so I actually was writing properly. The viewer itself just showed it as being backwards. And there we go. There's our duck. If you want to do any decorations, carving and feathers, details, you can go for it. Um, it looks pretty good like that.